You Wouldn't Want to Sail with Christopher Columbus, Uncharted Waters You'd Rather Not Cross, written by Fiona McDonald, illustrated by David Antrim. Hi there, this is Adam from Where There's a Williams, There's a Way. This week's book is a special book for Columbus Day. It is called You Wouldn't Want to Sail with Christopher Columbus, written by Fiona McDonald and illustrated by David Antrim. Now, if you enjoy these videos, please remember to subscribe to the channel and give it a thumbs up. Thanks and enjoy. Introduction. The year is AD 1492. The place is Palos, a harbor town in southwestern Spain. You are a bright young lad, but your parents are poor. Your father repairs boats and your mother sells shrimp in the marketplace. You're 10 years old and it's time for you to find a job to help support your family. Some boys on your street are already working. They run errands and wash pots and pans at the inn. Others are training for skilled jobs as blacksmiths or carpenters. A few have joined the crews of fishing boats. You don't want to have jobs like these. Secretly, you dream of becoming an explorer and having amazing adventures in faraway lands. Who knows? One day you might have the chance to sail on a long ocean voyage. Before you board a ship, think carefully. Are you ready to leave your family? suffer months of hardship and danger, and possibly lose your life? So you want to go to sea. Spain borders the Mediterranean Sea and the wide Atlantic Ocean. It has busy harbors all around its coasts. For centuries, Spanish people have relied on the sea to make a living. Many have become sailors and fishermen, but others have not left dry land. They've built ships, sewn cloth to make sails, hammered iron into anchors, twisted ropes, knotted nets, and crafted wooden chests and barrels. They've worked hard to unload ships' cargoes and build huge warehouses to store them. With all these different jobs on shore to choose from, are you sure you still want to go to sea? Why traveling by sea is best. Traveling by sea has many advantages, especially over long distances or when carrying bulky cargoes. Making journeys over land can be difficult and dangerous. Crossing rivers can be difficult. You'll find broken bridges and slippery stones. Make sure you don't fall off your horse or into a pothole. In summer, you'll suffer from thirst, heat stroke, and exhaustion. You'll have to fight off fierce bandits that, that wait to rob travelers. In winter, you'll face frostbite and sink up to your neck in snow. Handy Hint Get plenty of sailing experience, known as sea legs, while you're still young. You'll feel less seasick that way. You're late. Unload it quickly. Great cargo. Silk, nutmeg, cloves, pepper. Why do you want to explore? You know that exploration is the latest craze among clever people and merchants seeking fortune. Ships from nearby Portugal have made voyages along the coast of Africa, looking for a sea route to India. You've seen rich people wearing precious silks and jewels brought back from the Far East, and you've smelled the rich Arabian perfumes they wear. There's a rumor in town that a stranger has arrived at the monastery to, to talk to monks and scholars there. His name is Christopher Columbus, and he's planning a voyage. Eastern Treasures Customers all over Europe will pay high prices for goods brought from Asia and the Middle East. Pepper, silk, medicines, scents, gold and precious stones. Rivals. The king of Spain and Portugal both want to conquer lands in Asia and control profitable trade in silks, jewels, and spices. Imago Mundi. Columbus used a book called Imago Mundi, or Picture of the World, to support his ideas that the Atlantic could not be a wide ocean. All explorers are fools! They'll fall off the edge of the world! Columbus so far. 1451, born in Genoa, Italy. 1465, sails merchant ships in Mediterranean. 1476, moves to Portugal and makes plans for voyage to the east. 1484, asks King John of Portugal for money. King John refuses. 1485, moves to Spain. Recent Exploration in the past few years, explorers have already sailed northwest beyond Iceland and southwest to remote islands in the Atlantic Ocean. Handy hint. Remember, for centuries, scholars have argued that the world is round, even though it looks flat. 
It says in Imago Mundi that the Earth is round. Yes, and between the end of Spain and the beginning of India lies a narrow sea that can be sailed in just a few days. How would you pay for the voyage? Columbus is making plans for an extraordinary adventure. He believes that he can reach Japan, the easternmost country known to Europeans, by sailing west across the Atlantic Ocean. Columbus doesn't have any money to pay for his voyage. Buying just one ship is extremely expensive and for safety, he really needs two or three. Columbus must persuade rich people to help him. Over five years ago, in 1486, he asked the king and queen of Spain for money. They turned him down. Columbus never gave up hope, and earlier this year, 1492, he asked again. This time he's lucky. Queen Isabella has said she'll pay for his voyage. Most explorers need money to go on their expensive voyages. There are a few tricks you should know. Flattery. Praise the queen's noble birth, generous nature, and reputation. National pride. Tell the king that he'll win lasting fame for backing your voyage. Turn down? You could inherit. If you're lucky, an elderly relative will leave you a fortune when he or she dies. Be enterprising. Sell shares or persuade businessmen to invest in your voyage. Be warlike. Spend a year as a soldier and take prisoners. They'll pay large sums to be set free. Handy hint. Keep trying to find investors who will fund your voyage. Unless you're very determined, you won't succeed. I'll pay for the voyage, even if it means pawning my jewels. How would you prepare your fleet? How exciting! Columbus has chosen your town as the home base for his fleet. He arrived last night carrying orders from the king and queen. The people of Palos must find ships for Columbus, equip them with a crew, food, and drink, and have them ready to sail within ten weeks. The townspeople are not very happy about this. They believe that Columbus's voyage will end in disaster. Food for the voyage. Biscuits are hard, tasteless, and full of weevils. Salt or pickled meat, scrape the mold off before you eat it. Dried peas are either too hard or too mushy. Cheese is very smelly and full of worms. Fish is caught fresh, but it looks very strange and may not be edible. Wine and water. At sea, wine easily turns to vinegar and stored water becomes very salty. Shipmates. About 90 sailors have agreed to serve as crew. There are also two captains, three masters, three pilots, three boatswains, three stewards, three cockers to mend leaks, and a doctor, plus some government officials who may be spies. The language barrier. Make sure your interpreter speaks the right language. Columbus is taking an Arabic speaker with him to the Caribbean. Handy hint. Don't let any women on board. They're thought to be unlucky. The townspeople do not cooperate. However, one sea captain, Martin Alonso Pinzon, realizes this voyage is his great opportunity to win fame and fortune. He takes charge, stocks the ship, and recruits a rough and ready crew, including you. Could you handle a sailing ship? Columbus is taking three ships on this voyage, the Pinta, the Nina, and the Santa Maria. Like all other vessels, they are made of wood and are powered by the wind, trapped in their sails. Handling a sailing vessel is not an easy task. It takes strength and experience to raise and lower the heavy sails, and real courage to climb the tall rigging. If too many sails are hoisted, the mast might crack or the whole ship might capsize. If there are too few sails, the ship cannot steer a safe course and will drift dangerously at the mercy of the sea. Columbus's three ships, Santa Maria, designed to carry cargo. It's strong but slow and hard to control when out in the open sea. Pinta, a caravel, shipped with sleek, narrow hull, fitted with big square sails. It's the fastest of Columbus's three ships. Nina, a small, light caravel, fitted with triangular sails. It rides the waves and should be easy to handle, even in storms. Handy hint, learn to sew. One day your life may depend on being able to mend a sail. Be a safe sailor. Look out. Don't get caught out by calms or your ship will drift aimlessly. Don't get caught up in ropes used to raise and lower the sails. Firm grip. Don't fall from the rigging that holds the mast in place. Tie the sails down firmly or they'll flap in the wind and might rip and blow away. 
Hold on tight when you climb the mast to reef or shorten the sails in a gale. Which way should you steer? You head west across the Atlantic Ocean. Columbus thinks there's land in that direction. Plants unknown in Europe have washed up on shores facing west. Columbus has read books which make him think that Japan is only about 2,734 miles or 4,400 kilometers away, but it's 9,320 miles, 15,000 kilometers further. He calculates that he should reach it quickly. Just in case he doesn't, he decides to keep two logbooks, one for himself to record the true course he's steering. The other shows a safer route, closer to land, to calm the fears of crew members like you. To help you navigate, an hourglass measures time and calculates how far you've traveled westward each day. An astrolabe is used to work out your latitude, distance north or south of the equator. Logbook, make a note of your ship's journey in a logbook at the end of each watch. Throw a line and wait to check the depths of the water. Look out. Send someone up to the crow's nest to spot hazards. A compass is used to check the ship's course. Dividers, metal pinchers, measure precise distances on charts and maps. Traverse board, the helmsman marks each change of course by sticking a peg into a board. Put your back into it. The ship's flooding. I can't stand pumping the bilges. Handy hint. Keep a diary of your voyage. If you get home safely, you can publish it and make your fortune. Columbus's World Spain, where Columbus thinks Japan is, and the real world, Spain, where Japan actually is. Columbus doesn't know that the continent of North and South America and the Pacific Ocean lie between him and Japan. Could you cope on board? Life at sea is tough. You have to keep the boat ship shape or neat and safe, but it's crowded, cold, damp, smelly, and infested with fleas. It leaks and has to be pumped out every day. There are no beds or chairs except in Columbus's private cabin, so you have to sleep anywhere you find space. You can't get used to the system of watches, four hours on duty and four hours rest. So you feel tired all the time. Some older sailors amuse themselves by gambling, arguing, and criticizing Columbus. The crew's duties, pumping bilge water, cleaning the deck, mending sails, checking ropes, inspecting cargo, mending leaks. Eating, forget table manners. The cook spreads food out on a deck and the sailors help themselves. Washing, you can wash in seawater, but there's no soap and sailors do not shave. The toilet is just a wooden seat attached to the side of the ship. When the weather's bad, find a dark place in the hold. Ugh, the bilges are usually full of slimy, smelly water. Rats, most ships are infested with them. Itchy, ask an other sailor to help comb the lice out of your hair. Obey orders or you'll feel this whip on your back. Where's my private cabin? Handy hint, sleep up on the deck. It's cleaner and healthier than down below. Praise the Lord. Each day begins and ends with a religious service. The first is at 3 a.m. when a cabin boy sings a hymn. Would you lose hope? It has been over two months since you sailed away from Spain, and there's still no sight of Japan. The crew starts to grumble that Columbus has made a mistake in his calculations. You wonder if you are all doomed to die. Everyone on board has done his best to keep a lookout for land, but with no success. On October 10th, the crew of your ship, Santa Maria, organizes a protest to confront Columbus. They say the voyage west has gone on long enough and demands that he turn the ship around to go home. Columbus refuses and the men are still unhappy. Will there be a mutiny soon? Hopeful signs of land. Mist and cloud, this sometimes gathers above islands. Birds flying overhead, most don't go far out to sea. Seaweed, it often grows in shallow waters close to land. Shellfish and other creatures that like to live on beaches. Branches that have fallen off seaside trees. Smells of sweat and sewage mean that people are nearby. A glow on the horizon might mean houses, lights, and fires. Handy hint, keep your eyes open.
Columbus has offered a reward to the first man to sight land. I'm sick of this ship. It's time we went back. Could you survive on shore? Land at last. It's Friday, October 12th. For the first time in months, you're standing on solid ground. You've just scrambled ashore along with Columbus and his bodyguard. He's already claimed these islands for Spain. Now he's marching towards some local men. They seem friendly, but very surprised. In the distance, you can see their village. It has tall, round houses with grass roofs. If this is Japan, why aren't people wearing silk robes? Where are the jewels you hope to find and the palaces roofed in gold? You can see that Columbus is puzzled too. He's captured seven local men to guide his ships in search of treasure and spices. The natives call the islands Bahama, not Japan. What you'll find as you explore. Hammocks. Slung between trees, they make comfortable beds if you keep still. Tobacco. Taino people on the nearby island of Cuba breathe its smoke. Ugh. Yams. These huge roots are very nourishing, but how do you cook them? Iguana. These green, meaty lizards are best roasted. Are you hungry enough to eat one? Peppers and chilies. Test your taste buds with these favorite fiery flavorings. Maize. You need strong teeth to enjoy a meal with these golden yellow corn cobs. This isn't what I had in mind. Where do you think they came from? Handy hint. Be like the Taino people. Cover your face and body with paint to keep mosquitoes away. Would you get home safely? You've spent two months exploring. Columbus has landed on two big islands. He's named them Cuba and Española. He's very excited because he has seen people wearing gold necklaces in, on Española. This convinces him that Japan can't be far away. Like many of his tired crew, you're feeling homesick and you've caught a nasty tropical disease. Captain Pinzon sails away in the Pinta, saying that he's going back to Spain. The next day is Christmas Day and you're looking forward to a special meal. Then disaster strikes. The Santa Maria runs aground and water pours in. You have to abandon ship. Arg! This is all we needed. Northeasterly winds blew Columbus's ships from Spain toward America. He won't be able to sail back unless he heads north, where westerly winds blow. Handy hint. Make your voyage at the right time of year. Avoid the hurricanes that blow in spring and autumn. What next? Load as much as you can from the wreck of the Santa Maria onto the little ship Nina. You don't have room for all the crew, so leave some men behind to build the settlement. Use wood from the wreck to build a fort to protect the men left behind from attack. Take some Taino people back to Europe with you to show the king and queen. Say farewell to the men left behind and set sail in the Nina. Sail as fast as you can. You don't want the Pinta to reach Spain before you and win all the glory. Would you make more voyages? The Nina finally reached Palos Harbor on March 15, 1493. Soon after, Columbus received a hero's welcome from the king and queen, who eagerly agreed to pay for another voyage. They hoped he'd conquer more land, find more gold, and convert local people to Christianity. You sailed with Columbus on the second voyage, and on two more since then. But was this really a good idea? You visited beautiful countries, but you've also seen a lot of death and disaster. Columbus fights with the local people and treats them like slaves. The third voyage. Columbus makes slaves of the Tainos. The Spanish in the new settlement on Española rebel against him. Columbus gets very ill and is accused of fraud. He is sent home to Spain as a prisoner in disgrace. The fourth voyage. Columbus's ships are worm-eaten and his men are very weak. They are stranded on a sandbank in Panama, then marooned on Jamaica for a year. Columbus's later voyages. Second voyage. 1493 to 1496. Third voyage, 1498 to 1500. Fourth voyage, 1502 to 1504. Handy hint, pity the Carib and Taino people. Thousands die from disease such as the common cold brought by Spanish settlers. I wonder if I should have been a carpenter. Would it all be worthwhile? It's now 1504 and Columbus has made his last voyage. 
He's back home in Spain, tired, ill, bitter, angry, and deeply disappointed. His expectations have exhausted him, but he's still as determined as ever. He spends his days trying to win back power and glory and still thinks that he's reached the continent of Asia and the islands of Japan. He's sad and mistaken, but don't forget his voyages changed our view of the world forever. So looking back at the time you spend with him and all the adventures you shared, do you think it was all worthwhile? If you were given the chance again, would you really want to sail with Christopher Columbus? Columbus's final years. 1. Arch enemy. The king of Spain appoints Columbus's rival, Nicolas Ovando, as governor of Española. 2. America is named after rival explorer, Italian Amerigo Vespucci, who sailed in 1499 and 1501. 3. Rich rewards. Columbus receives just one fiftieth of the gold found in Española, not one tenth as he'd hoped for. 4. Columbus's letters to the Spanish king begging forgiveness and favor are thrown away. 5. Death. After Columbus dies in 1506, later explorers prove that many of his ideas were wrong. 6. Columbus's son is made admiral of the ocean sea and governor of the Indies in his place. Handy hint. Be kind to local people. Columbus wasn't. This made him many enemies and helped ruin his career. Why do they doubt me? One day they'll call me a great explorer. Oh man, that was a lot of information about Christopher Columbus that I had no idea about. I'll tell you, see this shirt? I like to take cruises. I don't know if I would want to take a cruise with Christopher Columbus. How about you? If you enjoyed this video, please remember to subscribe to the channel and also give it a thumbs up. If you enjoyed the book and you love it and want to have your own and read along with me, please click the link below and you can get your own copy. Thanks and we'll see you next time.